What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do a build or to make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, it's Tumblr time. We're finally gonna use the rotary attachment for our Ohm Tech Polar Laser. Yes, and we've done some testing on this. We've learned a few things. We spent a few hours. We have some tricks to share with you. So we look forward to showing you what we've learned. Step one, hardware setup. We're gonna install the rotary attachment. The Polar Laser comes with two rotary attachments. One for a larger diameter and one for a smaller diameter. You'll see that these little wheels here are much closer together on this one. Depending upon the object that you're going to engrave, you'll choose which rotary attachment to install. We are using a tumbler, so we're gonna go with the larger diameter wheels. First things first, we're gonna remove the bed and the tray. The rotary attachment sits down in the laser and so you have to remove the bed and the tray. They both just slide out. And then we'll set it down inside the laser. Next, we're gonna connect the pin cable to the actual rotary attachment. It can only go on one way. And each attachment came with its own pin cable, so there are two of them. Once it's on the attachment, we're gonna place it inside the machine. We're going to pull the gantry forward with the machine off and you'll notice there's a little black knob in the back left hand corner. We're going to remove the plastic cover and we're just going to insert the four pin connector into that hole. It goes notch side down. We're going to push the gantry back to the back exposing these two switches over on the left hand side. The first switch is going to activate the rotary tool. The second switch is going to deactivate the Y-axis. Now we're going to go over here to the right side of the machine and we're going to move this little piece of aluminum over top of this little stop switch. This switch allows the X-axis to continue to move. It thinks the tray is in place. Finally, we're gonna slide the gantry back into place. We're gonna line up the arrows. If we're using number two, we're gonna line up the arrows on the left-hand side of the machine. If we're using the attachment for number one, we're gonna use the arrows on the right side of the machine. Step two, software setup. This is where we jump into Lightburn and set up the rotary attachment inside the software. Now that we're in Lightburn, we're gonna go in and edit machine settings. This is essentially the BIOS for your machine. And here's where we're gonna enable the rotary tool. Be careful what you change here because this will change those settings on your machine. Next, we're going to laser tools, rotary setup. We'll select our rotary type as roller. We'll click to enable rotary. And then here we didn't really know what steps per rotation really was, so we just left it at its default. Yeah, when in doubt, default it out. <laughs> but we did know that we could measure the roller diameter. So we got out our calipers and here we've measured the diameter, it's 0.88. Now I measured the diameter with the little rubber bands on there. I wanted the full diameter. We entered 0.88 here in roller diameter. And though this clearly states that the object diameter is not required, it was a value we knew that we could measure, so we did. Yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> if I'm able to get that information, it might help out a little bit. So, <laughs> you know, we realize that it doesn't actually do anything, but this information does come in handy later on. It does. And Garrett really took, took his time getting this measurement. <laughs> I wanted to make sure it was perfect. <laughs> So we entered the diameter, which auto calculates the circumference for you. Step three, time for a tumbler testing. I tumble for you, I tumble for you, I tumble for you. I uploaded our logo, I set it to fill, and then I just used my best guess at whatever the power settings would be. And if you know Garrett, this is, this is quintessential Garrett. He's very confident he's got this pretty right. So he goes in for a full logo test. Go big or go home, Kim. 
it, uh, it came out a little squatty, so I'm gonna do some more testing. <laughs> so we decided that we needed to continue testing. I leave the room to go do a little online research. He continues to power through and change every setting in the book and decides he's gonna move to something smaller to test with. All right, we've done a ton of testing on these tumblers. <laughs> so not just one or two tests, more like 20 tests, as you can see here. <laughs> We noticed with the default settings, all of our uh, little logo tests came out stretched, squatty and fat. All right, now this is the important information. This is what we really want to share, what we've really learned about this rotary tool. This Most is the tumbler tip of the day. <laughs> the most important part of setting up your rotary tool is your steps per rotation count. Now when we started this we just left ours at the default and you can see that our image didn't come out as expected. It's stretched, it's oval shaped instead of tall. Kind of squished everything. Yeah everything got squatty. So this is where we had to do our testing and let us show you a little bit about steps per rotation. With the roller rotary this setup is for the motor to turn one rotation, then calculate the steps of the drive belt or gears, which will cause the roller to rotate one turn. Here, Garrett's making a mark at the top of the tumbler so that as we begin this framing process, we can see how far it's rotating. Now, this is where having that object diameter came in handy. We plug that in and it'll spit out what the object circumference is and now we're gonna draw a rectangle and the height of the rectangle is going to be the circumference of the tumbler. So the top of the rectangle will be at zero and the length or the bottom of the rectangle will be the circumference of the cup. If the steps per rotation are correct, the start and end of the rectangle will be in the same place. If the cup over rotates, you'll decrease the steps. If it under rotates, we'll increase the steps. We're gonna use just enough speed and power to try to leave a mark on the tape, but not on the tumbler. Here, I'm just gonna line up the laser head on the tumbler. I'm just making the laser head come to the tumbler where I'm trying to frame out this rectangle. This will just be a visual representation because we learned from our previous testing that we'll want to frame this and see how close we are before we do our first test. So we have aligned the laser head with the mark on the tape. We're going to frame out our rectangle and let's see how close we are the first time. Okay. Here you can see that we didn't even get halfway around the tumbler. So we know we have to change our steps per rotation. We're gonna increase them. Since we didn't get halfway, we're just gonna double it and change these to 2000 and frame it again. Next, we could see we over rotated. So we're gonna back it down a little bit. We set it to 1500. We're gonna frame it again. We're very close now. So we're gonna increase it just a little bit. Now we see we've over rotated, so we're gonna back it down. And this time we're gonna set it to 1600. Frame it again. We can see we're a little short, so we're gonna increase the steps just a little bit. 1650. Now we're gonna go ahead and make our cut because we think we're pretty close. Hopefully this is just a score mark. Oh, right, not a, not a full cut. <laughs> Again, I just wanna make a mark on the tape. I don't really wanna go through the tape. And you can see that we have over rotated. So we're gonna go in and decrease the steps per rotation. I'm just gonna start bringing them down. We're gonna bring it down 10 steps each time until we get closer. So we moved our box over a little bit so they didn't score on top of one another. We cut it again. Scored it. I hope we're not cutting this cup. <laughs> <laughs> so 
<laughs> squirt it. And we can see that we're even closer. We're a little bit closer. We'll bring it down another 10 steps. Score it again. <laughs> I mean, we can try cutting this thing in half. <laughs> oh, we're getting super close. So I think I'm just going to take it down two steps. Let's just give it a little two step. <laughs> a little two step. Here we can see that we're so close, but not exactly on top of each other. Okay, I'm gonna take it down one more step. I should have taken three steps the first time. <laughs> we're gonna move our little rectangle back over again. We just don't want these scoring one on top of the other. We can't really tell which line is which. I mean, that's pretty dead on. That I don't is think perfect. I don't think we can get any closer. Here you can see the top of the rectangle and the bottom of the rectangle align one right on top of the other. We'll save these settings and this actually writes to the laser itself and saves the settings in the laser. So next time you pull this up, these settings are set and you shouldn't have to change these again. If you have a polar laser, your settings should be something similar to ours or exactly as ours. All right, that took no time to get it actually dialed in. I think once we learned how the steps per rotation worked. Um, everything was easy and this came out great. Like 16 minutes, I think, That's 13 gross. minutes. This was a 13 minute tumbler. That was way faster than the X-Tool, which I think same size, same size logo was something like 40 something minutes. So there's just a difference in the powers of the laser. So we love our X-Tool. That's a 10 watt diode laser. Here we're using a 50 watt CO2 laser and it took that engraved time down from 45 minutes to 16 minutes. Yeah. Thank so now we can do a bunch of these in a day. Yeah. We'll be able to <laughs> pop these off in no time. And that means we are about out of time. So if you're not gonna join us for the patron after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it and make it again. Oh, and if you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you next week.